The Barry Colts, they're getting ready to take on the Ottawa 67s tonight. I'll be calling the game, so in a few hours, I'll make my way to the Sadlin Arena to get ready to call that one. Should be a fun one. And we do have a news item that will have an impact on tonight's game. I'll get to that a little bit later in the video, but I wanted to start off with the big news. Coming out of Kitchener, Hunter Brustevich, the defenseman of the Rangers, has signed his NHL entry-level contract with the Calgary Flames. So big congrats to uh, Hunter Brustevich. And the Rangers defenseman has been pretty solid this year. Uh, for the first half, it seemed like he was going to challenge for top spot in scoring. Uh, since then, he's kind of uh, took a step back. But mind you, the Rangers, uh, they took that step back as well. Uh, around the Christmas break, that's when the team kind of had a bit of a a speed wobble in their season, and they lost first place in the Midwest Division. But Kitchener still looking really good, and uh, Hunter Brustevich, a big part of that. And uh, for him, uh, he was originally drafted by the Vancouver Canucks in the third round of the 2023 draft, but was traded to Calgary in the Elias Lindholm deal. Uh, that was back January 31st. So the Calgary Flames love what they saw with Brustevich and Kitchener. They decided to acquire his rights and now have signed him to this entry-level deal. This season, Brustevich, 12 goals, 73 assists, good for 85 points, which is 10th overall in the OHL in points, and uh, he's only behind Zane Parekh in defenseman in points. So that just goes to show uh, how crucial Brustevich is on this team. He's just got that great breakout pass. He's contributing offensively with those 12 goals, uh, but 73 assists. That is a huge total for him. And it's going to be very fascinating to see how his game will carry over to the National Hockey League level uh, once he's able to make that leap. Uh, but uh, he definitely deserves this deal. And uh, it's going to be fun to see what him and the rest of the Kitchen Rangers are going to be able to do uh, as they get ready to go into the postseason. They're still trying to catch Sault Ste. Marie for third spot in the West. Right now, it does look as though uh, Kitchener will finish fourth. But they still got to play those games. And uh, sticking to the Western Conference, there's some health concerns with the London Knights. Uh, as of the time of the recording, the Knights, they're right now first in the Ontario Hockey League after a 5-1 loss, or a 5-1 victory, rather, on the road against the Erie Otters. And in that game, Denver Barkey had to leave early after taking a hit to the head. Uh, that was delivered by Wesley Royston. Uh, he was given a major penalty on the play. Uh, no reports yet on any suspensions from the hit, but still uh, a blindside hit, a dangerous check on Denver Barkey. But uh, according to the Knights, Barkey is doing okay. In fact, he was back on the Knights bench for the final few minutes of the game last night. Uh, he didn't take another shift, but he was out there to celebrate the victory with his team. So that is a good sign if you're a London Knights fan. But if uh, you tuned into the game yesterday, you'll also know that Easton Cowan did not play last night, putting his point streak on pause and uh, according to the team he took to the ice Tuesday for a bit he's been dealing with an upper body injury uh, and he just didn't feel comfortable so he didn't join the Knights on their road trip to Erie uh, so that point streak still sitting at 32 games it sounds like Cowan should be in the lineup tomorrow when the London Knights take on the Sioux Greyhounds and of course if he gets a point tomorrow against Sioux St. Marie that extends his point streak to 33 games which would then match a franchise record, which was set by Dave Gilmore in the 1993-94 season. So it'd be a nice touch for him to get that point streak uh, milestone on home ice in front of the crowd at Budweiser Gardens. And for this London Knights team, they've been dealing with injuries all year long where a player will go down or a suspension. We've seen quite a bit of those this year too with the London Knights. But when a player goes out of the lineup, they've kind of got this next up mentality. And we saw that again yesterday. Uh, Jacob Julian kind of fit into that spot for Easton Cowan. And the Knights were able to uh, get to that victory. They were up 2-1 uh, when that hit happened on Denver Barkey and then put up three goals, two of them coming on the power play. So this is a Knights team. They've got a lot of weapons. And even when they don't have Denver Barkey or Easton Cowan in the lineup, uh, they still get things done. They also were missing Sawyer Bolton. I haven't seen confirmation uh, as to his status, but uh, it wasn't a suspension, uh, but he was not in the lineup uh, for London. Now, the playoff picture for the Ontario Hockey League, it's starting to become a little more clear. We're now less than two weeks away from the end of the OHL regular season, and now all eight playoff teams are set for the Western Conference after Sarnia lost to Mississauga last night. 
Uh, seven of the eight teams have been decided in the Eastern Conference. We're just waiting for the eighth spot. Right now, that eighth spot being held by the Barry Colts. They have an eight-point lead over the Peterborough Peets. Uh, a two points here tonight for Barry would go a long way in potentially clinching that playoff spot. But uh, Barry, they're right now on a two-game losing streak, and Ottawa, not one of the teams that uh, you can take lightly. So uh, that battle is still happening at the bottom of the standings. But I wanted to take a, a deeper look because the standings are so tight. We have no idea what the playoff matchups are going to be as of yet. Uh, when you look at the West, we'll start things there. London and Saginaw still battling for first place overall. The Knights uh, right now have the advantage. They're two points up on Saginaw. Uh, but Saginaw, a game in hand, and the Spirit have the tiebreaker. So that race could go down to the wire. And then when you look at the positionings, fifth to eighth, they're all separated by just two points. You've got uh, the Owen Sound attack. They're in fifth, Erie, Guelph, and then Flint. Two points within each other, which is crazy. So we might not know those positions right up until the end of the regular season. The only spots that seem to be uh, secure is third and fourth. The Greyhounds still trying to catch Saginaw, but that gap continues to grow. And uh, for the Kitchener Rangers, uh, trying to catch the Sioux Greyhounds, but Again, it's that gap, uh, but, so we'll have to wait and see. But still, fifth through eighth, two points separating them. Then you look at those four teams. The Flint Firebirds might be one of the uh, teams to watch out for in the first round as a potential upset. They've been playing some great hockey since the OHL trade deadline. At the deadline, they were fighting for their playoff lives, and then they made those trades. They sent Zachary Giroux to Sudbury, and then... Uh, Gavin Hayes to uh, the Sioux Greyhounds and then brought in Oliver Peer and Roberto Mancini. And the team's been competitive and they've been right in it. Nolan Dan has uh, stood out as a player that's been getting a lot of goals. Also Slavicek, uh, he's done well as well for the Flint Firebirds. So I'm sure for the top four teams, Flint might be the team that those teams would like to avoid if possible. Well, Guelph and Owen Sound, they've been struggling, but they've got great goaltending. Carter George with the attack. And Brandon Gillespie with the Storm. So those two goaltenders, maybe elegi maybe potential there for them to steal a game or two. That's what you need from your goaltending in the playoffs. So it won't be a walk in the park against any of those teams at the bottom of the uh, playoff picture in the West. But still, uh, it's a lot to be decided. And then in the Western or in the Eastern Conference, the top six teams right now separated by six points. The Oshawa Generals. They sit first with 81 points. Well, Mississauga, they have taken over top spot in the Central. 78 points to their credit. One point ahead of both Sudbury and North Bay. However, the Wolves and Battalion both have two games in hand on the Steelhead. So uh, the Central still up for grabs with those three teams. And we'll have to wait and see, uh, see what happens on there. But it is some exciting times as we get closer to the postseason. And the final news item to come out this afternoon, the Barry Colts will be without Kayshawn Aitchison as he's been handed a two-game suspension. It's as a result of a check to the head he delivered in the game Tuesday afternoon against the Ottawa 67s. And for Aitchison, he is known for playing that physical style, and uh, sometimes uh, players who have that kind of style kind of cross the line, and uh, that's what happened for Kayshawn Aitchison. It's, uh, I know for... Aitchison these last few weeks, or if not the last couple of months, uh, he's been in the news a lot with everything going on with the bounty situation with the Sudbury Wolves. And I did see a lot of fans uh, commenting uh, on the hit that Aitchison delivered there on Tuesday, and it has in fact uh, led to a suspension. So he'll be at two games. He'll miss tonight's game against Ottawa and Saturday's game uh, against the Sudbury Wolves. So there was question marks on uh, how that would all go on Saturday when Sudbury comes to town, but with HSN being suspended, we don't have to answer those questions. <laughs> so that's how uh, the news is shaping up right now around the Ontario Hockey League. Let me know in the comments section down below your thoughts on any of these news items. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you again soon.